Hello, soft start of induction motor part one. We have taken the circuit here with a lamp, but actually it will be replaced in the subsequent part two with the motor or any other load as required for the soft start of induction motor. Before that, let us try to understand the basic circuit in an analog component way. This could be done in programmed way like using some microcontroller, but let's try to understand the basic analog way of a soft start. Before that, in this part one, we will try to understand the circuit of the control part and in the secondary part, we will deal with the soft start section. And if you look at the circuit diagram here, we find that we have a supply of a 12 volt AC. It could be from any step down transformer. We have a bridge rectifier here comprising of four diodes. And then we have a blocking diode here we call it because here we will get pulsating DC. Whereas here we will get rectified DC because of the filter is already there, filter capacitor is already there. So here the pulsating DC is tapped from here with a potential divider it is given to a comparator LM339. It is compared against, well this is the supply voltage, we have the regulated voltage here, regulator 7812, so we get regulated voltage here about 12 volts. This supply voltage is uh, coming here and a forward bias diode which is about 0.7 volts 4148 so at this point will be 0.7 volts roughly and there are two series resistors in the comparator to protect its uh, input so this comparator will comparing with a fixed voltage of 0.7 volts as compared to a pulsating voltage because here there will be pulsating voltage we will see all that in the graph when we uh, proceed and uh, and that is governed by a formula called when the non-inverting input and inverting input let us call it plus and minus for easy understanding so when the plus is more than minus when plus is more than minus that means when this voltage is more than this voltage the output is equal to one one meaning logic one not the one voltage logic one meaning whatever is the supply voltage the same supply voltage will appear here and this being ln339 being a open collector output so this has to be pulled up by a resistor. We have pulled it up by a 22K resistor. So this voltage will be roughly the same voltage as the supply voltage once it is given to logic one. And of course, there's a series resistor. So when this becomes high, this transistor conducts. Once this transistor conducts, this capacitor, which is otherwise in charge condition, gets discharged. How, when it is charged, when this transistor is in off condition, this capacitor gets charged this way. When this transistor switches on, this capacitor gets discharged. And then subsequently all the circuits they follow we will go into more details in the discussion stage so this is how we get pulsating DC here this one and this is 0.7 volt is this line so let's try to understand based on the formula now plus more than minus output is equal to 1 whereas this yellow the pulsating voltage is coming from here which is given to the minus terminal and uh, the fixed voltage is given to the plus terminal. Now let's see this graph. So what happens in the time scale from here to here, yellow is above the blue line. That means yellow, which is connected to the pulsating or the minus, that means from here to here, in the time scale from here to here, yellow is above the blue, that means minus is more than plus so the output is equal to zero we get the output as zero here and from here to here a small distance from here to here where blue is above yellow that means this from here to here plus is more than minus so the output is equal to one that means we get pulse here and this happens very close to the zero so we call it zvs output or zero cross sensing it happens at the zero cross sensing and no, no, what we can see if it is in the 2, 2 into uh, 5, it's about 10 milliseconds. It's a 50 hertz uh, supply. It could be 60 hertz and based on whatever we feed. And so in this 50 hertz, we find that these are the pulses which are generated as far as the zero voltage sensing is concerned. Now, while we proceed further, this point is this zero voltage. It has a long time where it remains off. And for a very short time, at this point goes high. When it is in the off condition, that means when it's from during this time, this transistor is in off condition, 
because there is no voltage here, the transistor is in off condition. In the process, this capacitor starts charging here. This is what the capacitor charging takes place. Slowly, RC based on the R and based on the C, it's a 2.2 microfarad capacitor and it charges like this. And moment this point goes high for this small duration, this capacitor immediately discharges through this. That is why we get a fall here immediately and it repeats. This is what we call the ramp voltage or sawtooth voltage. Now let's see what happens next. So we get the ramp voltage which is given to another comparator and it is given to the minus terminal. We call it minus and plus as we have explained before instead of calling it non-inverting and inverting for ease of understanding. So this ramp voltage or the sawtooth voltage, if we take it here a little, this ramp voltage, the sawtooth voltage is given to the minus terminal of a comparator and to the plus terminal, we are giving a varying voltage. This is the positive supply. Is a negative supply with a potential divider arrangement with a variable resistor for 3.3k uh, we have made an arrangement like this now what happens the same formula that means from here to here yellow is above the blue line yellow yellow which is connected to the negative is above the blue line blue line is positive now this ramp voltage which is in yellow color here the ramp is given here to the negative that means this is connected to the negative and this blue one which is the varying voltage we will vary this voltage is the blue one which is given to positive so in the time scale from here to here yellow is more than blue that means yellow which is connected to minus that means minus is more than plus if minus is more than plus output is equal to zero so we get zero here that means this output o we get zero here and from here to here for a very small time here as we have seen the voltage here what happens this blue is above the yellow that means from here to here plus is more than minus so output is equal to one that means you get this kind of pulses and with a transistor we have tried to invert it with the transistor the output of this is going to a transistor pnp transistor but inverting it and the t which is here so we get the inverted output of what we get exactly here now we change this voltage what we see now once we change this voltage you see what happens we change this voltage this voltage goes on rising and uh, what we find the width is going on changing and you can see this width is going on changing as we go on changing this this width is going on changing and uh, This width goes on changing. That means if this is the zero from here to here, as far as the trigger point is concerned, from here to here it is off. And from here to here it is on. That means during the 10 millisecond time period, from here to here the 10 millisecond time period as we know, the triggering takes place at here, not at here. Because from here to here it is zero, the triggering takes place from here. So as I go on increasing this weight, as we go on increasing this weight, so as we go on increasing this weight, what we find that the angle, we call it, gets delayed. You see, the angle gets delayed. Angle, how the angle gets delayed? You see, this level is going up. Once the level is going up, the formula remains same. That from here to here yellow is above blue and from here to here blue is above yellow and that is how this kind of waveform and here what we find from here to here for such a long period of the 10 millisecond time period maybe about say 8 millisecond and all it is an off condition that means this this given off off means this led which is of the opto isolator remains off and it remains on only in it remains on that is how you find this blinking in fact in the software it starts blinking but actually it will be blinking at a very high speed as far as the uh, frequency is concerned so what happens this led conducts only during this period as i go on doing this way that means heavily delayed now moment i come to again back 
it triggers in the earlier in the cycle it triggers earlier in the cycle see say for example here this is the zero this is the zero point as we have seen in the zero voltage sensing and here to here only it is off and here it becomes on that means it starts triggering here itself and as we know a trike or an scr once triggered it conducts till the end of the cycle end of the half cycle and that is how this conducts during that time this is what the basic conduction of the led of the opto isolator is considered now let's look at the final graph we have uh, made the scale little wider and we find one cycle here and we do the same thing we change the voltage here see once we change the voltage here we see because of the delayed angle the angle gets delayed see because if the angle gets delayed here we get a delayed angle triggering that when from here to here it doesn't trigger in the process the output is this way or if we see in the other scale you see it in the other scale we find this is the waveform yeah that you can see how the waveform is let us take it little up you see the how the waveform is this we go further further delay we make further delay further delay and you see how the output is falling and we again come back we make triggering earlier in the half cycle we find and finally it will become the full wave when it triggers at the beginning of the supply it becomes the full wave it almost is the full wave now so there is a little uh, gap here so it almost becomes the full wave or we see it uh, in this in this scale it becomes the full wave and that is how the power is controlled and since the trike is in series with the lamp and the supply this trike is in series with a lamp and the supply and we find that the lamp also is getting that kind of power this is the basic understanding of how we try to get the power control over the comparators and using a try now all that what we have to do for a soft start instead of this voltage varying manually what we are doing we will make an arrangement where at the time of switch on this voltage will automatically swing from one situation to the other so that the firing takes place in the beginning at a very very low end that means like this the firing will takes place will take place at a very low end at a very low end like this and gradually this voltage will be falling this is the fixed voltage mind it and this voltage will be gradually falling so that the full power is applied to the load to the track so this is what is the basic understanding of the soft start and how we make this vary automatically at the time of switch on we will see in the part 2 if you like it please subscribe thank you